Hello everybody and welcome back to scary as fuck Saturday this week. We're just gonna chill You know calm down a bit and watch some scary videos Three of them in fact instead of trying to get myself a heart attack playing a scary game um, Before we get into it make sure you leave a like for my heart comment what your favorite video was uh, And subscribe if you're new maybe you know you gonna help your boy out You know definitely like that that helps out more than subscribing uh, But without further ado Let's get into the videos. Also, this video is by Horror Shorts Party. I will leave a link to his channel down in below as well as a link to the full video. If you want to go give it a view and support his channel. I almost forgot. This story occurred around the early 2000s, back when I was still in elementary school. I was in my early teens, so the monotonous school life was something I always dreaded. My mom always picked me up from school as her workplace was just down the street, so getting a ride was always less strenuous than walking home. She would usually stop by our local McDonald's just before heading home as she didn't really prepare home cooked meals due to the exhaustion of being a single mother. As much as I adored my mom, the lack of home cooked meals and abundance of McDonald's always kept me out of shape for the latter part of my teen years. Well, she's learned how to cook. The one thing I found genuinely pleasing about that McDonald's was the enormous play place attached to the restaurant itself. My mom usually dropped me off there to play with my neighborhood friends and acquaintances, as long as I got the majority of my schoolwork done. There was this one occasion, though, that really disturbed me to my core, and it seeps into my daily thoughts from time to time. He's in elementary I remember school. being picked up from school and heading over to that same McDonald's venue to pick up some takeout for that evening. I thought it was in high school. As we got inside, I recall my mom ordering the usual Big Mac combo while I casually glanced at the play place through the glass window of where the eating area was. Jimmy, what drink would you like? Jimmy? Why was I shaking? Son? <laughs> Why was what I drink shaking would you like that? Like? I remember zoning out at this particular moment and could recall the echoes of my mom calling out for me. It was almost as if I couldn't move a muscle, like my entire body was in a state of shock traveling through space and time into another dimension. It felt like it was just me in the play place, like I had the entire setup all to myself. Jenny, what drink do you want? Uh, I'll get a Coke, Mom. As my mom headed back to complete the rest of the order, I could recall seeing the reflection of a Ronald McDonald clown standing from a distance behind me, the almost fuck? like he wanted my attention. I casually pretend like I don't see him by keeping my eyes glued to the glass I was and not bothering to turn around. <laughs> what the fuck? I know you can see me on the reflection of the glass. That's when I casually turn towards the direction of the clown and say, uh, can I help you, sir? Yes, my dear boy. Do you or your mother want to see what a pyromaniac can do with a little fire? We're just here to pick up a Big Mac, so no thanks. Maybe I can cook you a delicious giant Big Mac with my fire abilities so that you will never need to come to McDonald's again. Hey, leave us alone or I will call the cops. Go ahead and call them. I'll just teach my cellmates how to start a fire and make an explosion oh so beautiful. <laughs> Let's get out of here, Jimmy. Why does it sound like the generic clown in cartoons? Let's inside my mom's vehicle and drive away from the McDonald's. Or should I say the clown? About a week after that bizarre encounter, <laughs> I spent the, the majority of my time playing Duck Hunt on my Nintendo as my computer lacked the entertainment that today's modern computer has. I eventually went back to that local McDonald's as I surprisingly missed the food, but more importantly, the play place. As the day transitioned into the evening, my mom dropped me off there as the company of the local teens in the neighborhood made her feel a little more comfortable doing so. I'll be back at 10 p.m. sharp. Call me if you want me to pick you up earlier, okay? okay like it's mom. nighttime already. What's she I doing? I decided to call my neighbor friend Chris using the payphone located outside the McDonald's venue. Uh, hello? Hey, Chris, it's Jimmy. You still coming to McDonald's tonight? Oh, hell yeah. I'll be there in one... Oh. Hey there, long time. <laughs> 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 Yo, why the fuck did he smash his head again? I'll be there in one. It scared the fuck out of me. Jesus Christ. No C. What the hell do you want? Oh, Let me fuck. show you how I make my fire. <laughs> Get the hell away from me or I'll call the cops. Fine, have it your way then. 
Your little behind couldn't handle all this smoke anyway. That's when I ran inside the McDonald's and immediately made my way inside the play place. I honestly could have notified a McDonald's employee, or any stranger for that matter, but I ultimately decided to take the high road and wait it out until it was time for my mom to pick me up. I remember making my way up through the tunnels of the playground as I just wanted to reach the very top and avoid any further encounters with any other weirdos. No, he's gonna be in there. I eventually snatch reached you up. the top of the platform and remember basking in the view as the array of colors from the ball pit was always something I found oddly satisfying to look at. That's when I noticed a familiar head beginning to protrude from the balls in the pit. Yo, what the, the clown, fuck? The same clown from earlier looking up at me with his ominous smile and revolting eyes. What the hell is going on? Why isn't anyone acknowledging this freak? The clown just stood there looking at me as if nothing mattered besides myself and his existence. I know you can hear me up there. What the hell do you want? I killed your mother, Jimmy. Now it's only you and your stupid neighbors left. What the what? hell are you talking about? Jump! Hell no, leave me alone! Oh, don't worry, it's totally safe, Jimmy. Now jump! No, I'm not doing it! Jump! 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 That's when I look to my left and see my friend Chris right next to me. He had no what? choice. <gasps> the fuck? What the hell? <laughs> no, it's what? Wait, are those, are those bowling ball pit sounds, bro? <laughs> I fucking can't. I can't. Your tiny little brats. Jump, 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 jump. I began to close my eyes and hyperventilate as I felt a sudden surge of adrenaline flowing through my body. Don't fucking jump, but idiot. Then I began to feel a rather odd sensation. Something like a fiery substance burning the hairs on the back of my neck off. That's when I open my eyes and find myself on my apartment balcony with my entire building engulfed in flames. What the hell? Somebody help me! Help! I hope you all burn in hell and are loving it. I hate you, Dad! You will always and will forever be a clown! What? I hate you, stupid, stupid clown! Help! Somebody please call 911! Help! Help me! Somebody please call 911! Help! <laughs> what? <laughs> that took a fucking I was not expecting that it took a fucking turn. What the fuck? Okay. I, oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. All right. <laughs> Next video. Next video is called Die Fantasy by Tire Sushi Records on YouTube. I will be leaving a link down to his channel and this video in the description. Go support the channel, give him a view, do what you do. Without further ado, let's get to this video here. Oh.
fuck did I just watch? What? Uh, huh? Wait. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm gonna have to age restrict this video. Oh, fuck. What the fuck? Next, we in the next video. What the fuck was that other one? This is... True Tinder, you see it right there. True, three true Tinder horror. So we're only watching fucking one of them, okay? I can't, I can't make this video 30 fucking minutes. We watch three true Tinder horror stories. <laughs> I'm still fucked up for the other video. IMR, this is my IMR Scary Tales. I will be leaving a link down in his channel and this video as well. So you can watch it in its full length down below in the description. Don't forget to check it out. Show support over there. I don't know these people at all. I'm gonna keep it a book. But I'm, I can't just be taking fucking content. All right, we're we gonna start. We're gonna start. Last week, I broke up with my boyfriend, whom I dated for three years. Even though we weren't separated, I remained in touch with him as a friend. He's a nice guy, but I just felt it wasn't working between us anymore. My best friend, Tina, suggested like a dude. me to start casual dating again. She said it will help to get over this breakup. To be honest, last three years I hardly went out with new people or socialized that bit. Speaking about casual dating, no app is appropriate than Tinder. At least that's what I used to believe. So you got, you, you listened to your whole friend and went on Tinder after a breakup? I sat down on my bed and registered on Tinder. After going through some guy's profile, I got bored for not finding a good match and eventually dozed off. The next day, I went back to work when my friend Tina called me. Tina said, the Jill, you know what happened this morning? Tom called me and asked me how you were doing. I kind of told him that you were back to Tinder again to kind of give him the idea that you have moved on. Oh, that wasn't too much from my side, right? Tina has always been like this, taking things on her own hand all the time. I expected something like this already, Hello. so I replied with an upset face. Yeah, I will handle it. Bye. And disconnected the phone. I called Tom that night and apologized on Tina's behalf. Tom has always been nice to me. He said in a mature tone, It's okay, Jill. I got your signal. I wish you the best. But whenever you need, don't hesitate to contact me. Oh, bro, I stop simping. She be all right. Don't. I feel bad for him, but his sense of understanding made me admire him too. A few days passed, and I went on with my. Hey, not even because of the whole Tinder thing, just in general, sex. And sometimes with their mutual friends for a drink or movies. One Sunday afternoon, I was chilling in my room when I received a request from a guy on Tinder. I opened his profile and started to check out his pictures. The guy wasn't that handsome, but he had a friendly face. I accepted his request and we started chatting on Tinder. His name was Mark. He said he works in a department store close to my location. We kind of hit it off. It seemed we had quite similar tastes in music and food. Mark asked me out for a lunch date. We decided to meet the next day at a local restaurant. I reached the restaurant five minutes late and noticed Mark sitting at a corner table smiling at me. He seemed attractive in real life. He had a good height and charming nature. His flirtatious well, nature was a bit edgy for a first date, but somehow I enjoyed his fresh attention after a long time. The date went well, and we decided to meet again sometime. Mark started texting me regularly. Her toes were like that. I was stop. <laughs> One day, we were talking over the phone, as usual, when Mark asked me, So, are you in a relationship right now? I replied in an awkward tone. Well, if I was, I wouldn't be talking to you all this time. And laughed a bit to loosen up the conversation. Mark didn't respond to my joking tone and said, Love has become a joke these days, you know. You can hardly trust people. I realize he might have been through a really bad breakup, but I chose to stay out of his personal affairs. With more days passing, Mark always tried to slip into our conversations and how heartbreak is the worst thing to do to anyone. I felt bad for him, but we kind of came a bit close. The man kind of weird, day, though. Mark asked me to go on a dinner date with him. He came to pick me up from my house. As I got into his car, I could smell booze on him. He didn't look drunk, but he told me he went for a few drinks earlier. It didn't worry me because he was on his best behavior so far. He was driving carefully too. 
Around 9 p.m., we reached the restaurant. We sat down and ordered the food. Mark said while smirking at me, Hope you won't mind if I order some drinks. I actually didn't mind because it was good to see him having fun. Not a Man, it was just drinking. This relationship issues. Instead, he was very much flirting with me. I was blushing with his compliments. He drank four pigs of whiskey own... in just half an hour. Finally, I got a little bit worried and said, "You have to drive, also." The man's alcoholic. That. That's what Walking he is. At me, his eyes got stuck at mine. The way he stared suddenly creeped me out. Then he said, "Jill, I really like you. I would like to take you home after dinner. It has been quite a while. I am going out with him, so I kind of wanted to get close to him." But seeing him getting so drunk, I wasn't feeling that sure. I fumbled and said, Um, how far is your place? He replied, Not that far. Come on, let's go. I couldn't say no to him, even though his sudden behavior change seemed unusual to me. He got into his car and started the engine. The road Why don't empty. you just drive? He started to speed up the car. I got scared and said, Mark, please drive slowly. You're scaring me. He looked at me and then started to chuckle, as if I said something very stupid. After leaving the town, we got onto a dusty road. I said, I didn't know you live in the outskirts. Um, how far now? Mark replied in a low but firm voice, almost near. We reached in front of a wooden house after 10 minutes. The what? house, house looked dilapidated? And out of maintenance to me. The entire house was in darkness. We got down from the car, and Mark said in a mocking voice, Welcome to Lion's Den, and started to <laughs> chuckle in the same manner. I thought it was all because Bro, of the hole in his stomach. As we got inside, so Mark switched ass house. the light. The house was really old. I could see a layer of dust on the couch and furniture in the living room. He took me upstairs. There was a bedroom and bathroom upstairs. The bedroom also appeared unclean and smelly. It felt like no one had cleaned the room for a while. Mark told me to sit on the bed and went to the kitchen. I waited for a few seconds. Bro, I'm out of there. Suddenly, I saw something shining under the pillow. As I lifted the pillow, my heart sunk in horror. The gun? There was a sharp knife under it. Oh. I immediately got up and tiptoed to the kitchen. As I peeked inside, I saw Mark mixing something into a glass of wine. Is this guy planning to drug me and then slit my throat? Oh God, I made a huge mistake. This is why I, I don't see a whole idea. friend. There was no way this I could get out do that. of this house because Mark locked the door using his house key. It felt strange for me then, but I didn't care about it earlier. God, how stupid am I? I said to myself. Mark lifted two glasses on his hand and started walking towards the bedroom. I already came to the bedroom before he could realize that I had understood his vicious plan. He got inside and looked at me with his wide eyes and smiled. His face was looking all evil. He then said in a spine chilling, cold voice, here's your drink, Jill, enjoy. I this man's a no fucking serial killer. This guy and get out of this house alive. So a plan came to mind. I said, um, thanks. Hey, can I use your bathroom for a sec? Mark replied, of course, but don't make me wait too long and smirked at me. I got up the and boy is to creepy. The as soon as I locked the bathroom door, I dialed my ex-boyfriend, Tom. Wait, 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 and said, what? Who called that ex? In the time of crisis, call the authorities. Yeah, it's. <laughs> Let the ex call me, talk about day in trouble. What a surprise, Jill. So, what's. But before he could finish, I replied in a broken but low voice Please help me. This guy's trying to kill me. I need your help, Tom. And started whimpering. Tom replied in a panicked voice Oh shit, where are you? Share me your location. I shared with him my live location, and Tom said, Listen, Jill, just hold on for some time. I am coming there as fast as possible. I stood inside the bathroom like a statue. I was completely freaked out and paranoid. Suddenly, a knock appeared on the bathroom door. I this did not sound voice. real. 
Jill, did you take something that is mine? Mark said. My hands turned cold. Oh my god, this guy now knows. He hasn't figured out that I've taken his knife with me. Mark started to bang on the door. Come on out, doll. I have planned a romantic night for us. Don't make me force you. The bathroom door was made of half glass and half wood. Hence, I could see Mark's figure leaning on the glass. He almost stuck his entire face on the glass and said, Jill, don't make me force you. Come out and give me my knife back. I started screaming and crying. Uh -oh. Please let me go. But what Mark did next shook me from the inside. You break the window. He started banging on the glass with his head. Cracks started oh. to appear on it and blood splattered on the glass too. He was hitting the glass like a maniac with his head screaming, open, open now. Suddenly, I saw Tom calling me. I picked up the call and Tom said, I'm here, where are you? I was in no position to explain further. I rushed to the bathroom window and luckily it was open. Without giving it a second thought- To heat it out the window, bitch? I hurt my ankle, but I saw Tom standing in his car on the road. I sprinted to him and got inside his car. I screamed with the top of my lungs, drive Tom, drive now. He drove the car away and that night I took sleeping pills to sleep. Tom stayed back with me. It's been a few days since this incident. Last night we sorted things out and are back together again. I can't trust any unknown guy anymore. Tom is taking a shower right now in my bathroom. But suddenly a text has come to his phone. Reply from an unknown number. The text reads, got the payment, thanks. It is a reply mm. to a text that Tom sent to this number. Tom has texted this number last night. Got her back. Thanks for all the help. Sent you the money. What? What? <laughs> all of these had so many plot twists. I can't. Yo, yo. Please leave a like on the video. Leave a motherfucking like for these goddamn stories. I'm I'm out. Uh, I'm going to see you guys Monday with whatever I post. Uh, you guys have a good weekend. Thank you for watching. Hopefully, I will see you in the next video. Peace.